So, so with the ERT, you said that you worked the um, uh, Pentagon and 9-11. Yeah. What did you do? Well, we, so we went to the Pentagon first and I think we got there like the 21st of September. And that was a story too, because we, we took a team of like, I fit, forget like 12 or 15 people from LA. And um, of course I'm in LA, so we're three hours behind and 9-11 happens. My mom calls me, I'm on the phone with her watching the second plane go into the tower. And I'm like, I've got to go. And I went out the door to go to the office. And then I'm like a hundred yards out of the driveway. And I'm like, damn, I better pack a bag. And we packed a bag and we basically lived in the office for like the three or four months after 9-11. But then, so then they're going to send this team to the Pentagon and uh, we're on a, a double decker plane. And I'm, I said to the team leader, I said, I'm not getting on that plane unless we can see the cockpit. Like, I'm, I'm just not getting on the plane. And a bunch of the other guys were like, yeah, we're not getting on there either. And the stewardess was, or the person that was checking us in was like, well, that's first class, blah, blah, blah. You, you're not getting on first class, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, well, we're not going. And the pilot comes and uh, my team leader's trying to talk me down. I'm like, Dave, I'm not getting on that plane and you shouldn't either and left us. We have armed guys watching cockpit. And finally the pilot comes and he's like, hey, what's going on? And I explained to him the situation and he tells the girl, bump him up to first class. He's like, I want him up there too. So, so we go to the Pentagon and it's a crazy experience because they have like machine gun uh, emplacements, like air support. There's jets flying over, like military jets. It was like something out of a movie. But what they would do is they would bring the debris out of the Pentagon and dump it, it with large machinery in the Pentagon parking lot. And then we'd go through it by hand looking for body, uh, body fragments and paperwork, anything from the plane. And we'd separate all that out so that we could go through it more carefully. I don't know why I always just assumed that it was NTSB who was putting those things together and well, not that, you guys. What's crazy is we work really closely with NTSB, but they don't have the manpower. Mm. And that's the one thing the FBI brings is the manpower. So there's like a memo of understanding with NTSB that FBI ERT will uh, support them. So tell so me. So just about every plane crash, we go out and assist. So you had mentioned that you also worked 9-11. What did you do in New York? So in New York, so then we went to New York in February of 2022 at the tail end of everything. And there we were working out at the Fresh Kills dump. Same thing. They would bring debris out. And there they had it on, they'd put it on like a conveyor belt. And I think they're typically used like for gold mining and things like that, where it shakes the debris. And so they would dump the debris, we would shovel it onto the conveyor belt. And again, we were searching for body fragments and paperwork. And um, we were still finding body parts in February after, what, five months later. So Andy, that's interesting because you're not at ground, you're not at ground zero, you're no. working at a dump site, but you had mentioned to me that you're still having kind of like sniffling allergies from working on that yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. Which is fascinating to me because, you know, you have all these guys that have died from working nine, the, the ground zero. We've lost 26 agents. I did not mostly know that. Mostly evidence response team members. Wow. Yeah. And again, as law enforcement, you could sign up for the, there's a 9-11 compensation program where they provide health benefits, but Right after 9-11, everybody was like, ah, we don't need that. And then um, I had a, a assistant section chief at headquarters, and uh, he was my assistant section chief when I was in the special events management unit. Very nice man. And uh, 
he worked out at the FBI gym and so did I. So we knew each other, you know, friendly that way, even though he was my assistant section chief. And uh, we talked down at the gym and things. And he came in one day with a uh, head pulled a muscle in his hip. And um, this was like in 2004 or five when I was down at headquarters. Well, here it turned out he was full of cancer. And he passed away in like 2005, but it wasn't until like probably maybe five or six years ago that they started recognizing all these different cancers that evidence response team members had, had, um, had come, I don't know how, had been diagnosed with as being related to 9-11. And now all those there's probably, well, there's 26 people that they've linked their deaths to 9-11. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Let's Even all these years later, yeah. it's crazy. Yeah. No, I, know, I mean, that's, you know, John Stewart was talking about all those NYPD guys and uh, and NYFD guys, but I didn't even think about you guys being out. Yeah. Yeah. And now they've also extended those benefits to people who even resided in the area. Mm -hmm.